Um, yeah, I just wanted to. Um, I'll probably have Courtney uh, brief you kind of a little bit more in detail, but yeah, we do have kind of three, um, three items uh, that we want to go over tonight. And uh, my recommendation would be that since we, you guys are sitting where you're at, um, maybe we tackle the ones that are related to the Muni land plan first. Um, and so that's where kind of our attention is drawn with, um, with the maps right there. But we do have um, the 4th of July Beach um, and Spring Creek Beach. From the Muni land plan, and, and kind of when we came when we came from the Muni land plan, um, this is one of the work projects that we put down at the bottom that said that this is something that we need to tackle, and this is one of the, the early ones. And I think that this the public had a lot of interest in, the, in this one as well, uh, because this is looking at maintaining, um, like cleaning some things up as far as housekeeping, and then also just making sure that the public has good access, good parking. Uh, reasonable signage, um, kind of in perpetuity. Mm. So, anything else you want to add there, Courtney? Yeah, so if you look at page 15, that's we'll, we'll jump forward in the agenda and talk about Spring Creek Campground and Fourth of July Beach first. But as we're looking at these maps and in our discussions, you know, consider the things that, as a Planning Zoning Commission, you would, you would have the power to to do so um, looking at any possible replats that you would suggest that would improve you know parking or access to these areas or perhaps parking you know parking requirements or land that would improve the amount of parking and then legal access to the beach or signage that could improve you know the public um, awareness of these areas and then, obviously, the Planning Zoning Commission can't do anything with land acquisition, but you could make a recommendation to City Council if there were parcels of land that you would, you know, recommend to be acquired to improve the access and, and parking issues. So those are kind of the, the points we want to consider in our conversation as we look at these areas. Well, since you brought up parking first, um, I just want to say, have you run across or has it been reported to you either through Parks and Rec or other places that there are challenges with parking out there as not enough parking or people just don't know where to park because you know identifying places to park is great you know sort of demarcating where it is <coughs> plus having the signage for it but do we have to expand parking or do we just need to have signage and just better market or better define it? Um, I, I haven't heard from Parks and Rec but the comment that I have heard uh, in regards to the 4th of July beach is that the parking lot is often unusable mm -hmm. because it is filled with water and then it turns into like a skating rink uh, and, then it, and then they start doing during breakup it then yeah it just becomes like an unusable parking lot and that's why you have a lot of people um, parking along up top but even so like that is a small parking area mm -hmm. and if we're looking towards the future I think that it would not be it would kind of be one of those things where I think that we could we need to make plans for more parking that's actually like not kind of on the side of the road where it is right now mm -hmm. um, and kind of just maybe you guys can look at maybe what what's like 10 20 years down the road what do we need to have that kind of as a permanent recreation um, place um, and then the other thing too is that Courtney reminded me of that I did want to mention too is that there are the possibilities if there are other entities like state entities like DNR um, or other states that there are, are the possibilities of land swaps and so if there are sections of land that we know that they own um, that we have a, maybe a piece of land that makes more sense for them to own somewhere else that we can also look at doing those things if we want to try and build something up a little bit better so th that is kind of a another possibility to look at and I did want to make a quick mention I, I really appreciate Carol's uh, input on this and her your time and effort that you paid attention to mm -hmm. looking at those maps from our conversations and giving some really valuable input there. So thank you. And I don't know if it would be helpful at all, but I do have, if, you, if I want, if commissioners want it, I did print out your maps, Carol. Oh, thank you. Um, that, sure. you can, that the commission can then reference as well with these. So it's my dream oh, plan. Yeah. It's a dream plan. <laughs> yeah. Good. Love your printer. Um, She's so awesome. Just, 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 just,
Yeah, yeah. Just, no, there's two. The one for Fourth of July. Okay, but on the same. Are they in the same piece? So this is um, one is before, and one, is, one is now, and one is after. So let's see. Let's read it first. Now. I want to see this is the one. Cool. Mm -hmm. so here's, here's a now. Here's a now? Okay. I think that's the green parcel. Yeah, Jag parking lot, beach parking. Yeah, I think I, I think I just printed the your oh. proposed one. Oh, okay. okay. So, so all like, they all look that's the same. That's how we're all looking. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. I was like, yeah, that's so, a lot of details here. Okay. Yeah. Um, yeah, I'll take one home. Yeah. Okay, so we have now on the table, and, and this is your proposal. my proposal. Here. Let's, um, I don't know, let's pick one thing to start talking about, like, uh, maybe parking. That's, to I, me, that was the easiest, yeah, more concrete thing that. for me to think about was parking, because um, it's an immediate problem. Yeah, there's definitely, I'd like to see the parking change before 4th of July, um, because I don't park down that hole ever, in the wintertime especially. It becomes this big either ice or slush or combination, and then you have to drive up that hill mm -hmm. to get out of there. Mm -hmm. I would like to see the... Uh, right. Yes. <clears throat> this this little, yeah, that's, that's a little bit yeah. of a problem. I think, well, I would like to see this... Uh, um, barricaded off with rocks, have the parking up here, and maybe do, I don't know if you'd have to do like infill, but just let this become trees and grass and have a walkway down through it. Okay, can I ask a question? This is the same thing as this? Yeah. yeah okay. This is just a bigger version. This is just a bigger yeah. version. Okay, so. I mean, I don't know if the right city's here. okay doing that, but yeah. I think can that you just Can you do that, just do that one more time because your hand was right here? Sorry. So. So right now, this hill right here is pretty steep. Yes. And this parking lot becomes ice and mm -hmm. water, and then it's just, and I, and a lot of people only park up here because of that and walk down. But Jag parks up here now, right? Boy, they sure do. So anytime no, I've that's been. That's not necessarily their parking lot. It's not. I, I see. So anytime, because I have Mastiffs, so I bring my Mastiffs and let them run down here. Anytime I've come down here when the weather's beautiful, someone always parks behind me. Yeah. It becomes it's wonderful. Lovely. Yes. Really? I've not seen it. <laughs> yes. But if we But there's nowhere else to park stuff. So, yeah. You know, right. we need to okay. I think the parking should be up here. Mm -hmm. And this should be um, bouldered off so people can't park down there. And then this area, these because this bowl is all around this piece right here. Mm -hmm. If those were moved up to here and this could just be allowed to turn into trees and grass again with a trail going down, maybe it mm -hmm. could get some help it, you know, with this yeah, a little end fill. Like felt so it's not the hole anymore. Yeah, so at least it's a nice slope hole. walking down. Uh huh. Fill it's, it up a little bit with parks and rec could kind of work on a little bit. Mm -hmm. But I, you know, if you had a nice walking trail down, I think it would fill in with trees and grass fairly quickly, sure. especially the always. And then parking could be up here, and we divert that whole situation. Okay. Is it possible that if we didn't fill it with um, trees, that maybe we could put some like. Uh, picnic tables or something down here. So if when families want to come down here and let their kids run, you know, let the dogs run. The, yeah, I mean, you know, I'm not if you couldn't, I'm all for the blocking that off because I know yeah, just from the standpoint of it's a huge party place mm -hmm. for folks, and that's it's dangerous there in particular. So it's uh, if you can block it off as much as you can without having vehicles and things running all over the place. Then you can yeah, boulder it off. I think it would make it a lot nicer to move the rocks up, fill it in, so it's. Yeah, so, it, so it, it looks the same. Yeah. yeah, and then we can either let it fill in or put a picnic table or Parks and Rec can decide kind of what, them what, what yeah. they really want to do with that over there. But well, in the summertime, it's very accessible and mm -hmm. useful. And I sort of hate to see um, us take away parking. Right now, it's like you decide. If you have a big honking truck, you can go down there and even if your hubcap is, you know, half buried, they can power yeah. out of it. But I, in my little car, choose not to go down there. But I'd hate to see us take away parking. And some people are not able to walk. They're yeah. disabled, and they like to just be as close as possible and just enjoy the view from down here, looking out. Cause it's 
beautiful, much. You can't really get that view from up there. Now, <clears throat> I think we could have enough parking up here that it wouldn't be an issue. But I do, you're right that people, it's nice to have a view. Mm -hmm. People just sit there in their car, even if it's really windy, and eat lunch, or just, you know, watch the surf, watch the action. What? So I'd sort of hate to take away, and Norm has done a good job trying to fill that in and create a little drainage ditch over mm -hmm. here, but it's just still pretty low. What if we just fill it in? Like we bring could, the oh, grid we up. Always more gravel. We have lots of gravel. Yeah. <laughs> we could also, you could recommend which could recommend having that actual like handicap parking, mm -hmm. so that's right. very that specific. Question, so yeah. that's it's very specific, just like you would nice. somewhere else. And you could have like a nice area where you maybe have a spot that's between two rocks that you know is handicap accessible, and the path is really like compacted yeah. through there. So, so, so if someone did want to roll, nice. yeah, roll mm -hmm. a wheelchair out there, or at least if they had, were using a walker, it would create a better access. There. Mm -hmm. Good idea. It's almost similar to the way they do it at Eggs Glacier on the lower lower trail around there. I mean, you may not have to pave it or anything else like this, but at least it's wide enough for people to get around and do mm -hmm. things. Mm -hmm. Right. Yeah. Try to all all abilities. Yeah. That's true. And right. also, people with surfboards, paddleboards, kayaks. It's a nice loading sort of going yeah. up there and then dragging all their stuff. Even the bike sailors. The it's amazing. And then people with dogs that don't want to deal with traffic. Boom, you're there, the dog's out, and you're, you're gone without you know, Okay. What if we mostly work on the drainage issue and, it. and yeah, um, it. bring it more up to a proper grade mm -hmm. so we don't have as much pooling? Mm -hmm. How hard is that? I mean, I, I'm How are you going to get something? Are you going to get something big in there? Mm -hmm. to just go take it just looks so tiny. Like, I've been there so many times, but I just feel like it looks so tiny. Yeah. The city's core. The city's core is just. Up, <laughs> right. up, the city's yeah. core is just right, right up, 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 just up, up the, just up this road, oh, right, up, that, up, right up, here, up, up right. in there. Yeah. The city's. Yeah. yeah. The city's core is like actually full. I went off roading with my avalanche down that way somewhere, mm -hmm. and then there was just a drop. My was like, what? Stop. <laughs> what? Well. I guess we don't okay. go that way. <laughs> yeah. I would be fine with that. That would be get rid of trees or anything like that. The biggest issue is it's kind of a pain to park there. And I think Carol's right. A view would be nice to keep for people. Mm -hmm. So no, many people don't even get out of their cars. Yeah. They're just there. And it's, it's nice. Yeah. I mean, there's other places they can pull over too. But even like on the other side, uh, I'm sorry, the the other beach. You know, even this is beautiful. Mm -hmm. You know. Okay. So, but I guess I'm not. You can say that's not okay. as pretty as that. I suppose it's a slightly it's different. different. Yeah, it's but just different. the whole piece, of this stuff. Uh, yeah. yeah, yeah. All the way to Fox Island. It's, it is a gorgeous, gorgeous place. So the problem to me, and that's why I kind of sectioned off some parking here for Jag. And I was disappointed that we couldn't replant that in our last plant, but I know things take time. But if you've been out there, Jag is parking all over here yeah. the mm -hmm. east, and with the Tuscanina and the, and the Kukuyan and another boat, they just have a lot of workers. So there's, they're just plugging up and they're not paying as far as I know. They're not leasing this for parking. Mm -hmm. Norm said, oh, it's the Sorrel right-of-way. It's like, oh, no, it's not. <laughs> yeah, because that's elsewhere. There's yeah. a cul-de-sac. Yeah. Well, this is the other Sorrel Road. But um, they are getting a real sweet deal from the city not have to pay anything for parking on the city property. We, the public, pay for all the time. Are, are not benefiting from their use of this. And so I think we should designate them a parking lot. And then over here, they plug up this upland area right here. It's mm -hmm. one of my favorite places to park because it's close. They don't have to worry about the dog. Um, and they park there all day long. And then they also park, the trees are not quite the same. But anyway, they, they plug up this other really nice beach place where you could just go down. So I think we should reserve, you know, just be a signage right now. Just say reserve for beach users, reserve for beach users. Lease this to them. And, and also this uh, lower part here, mm -hmm. this is another um, prominent access for the kite sailors. I use, they, we use that one a lot. This one, yeah, we we yeah. primarily use that one just because yeah. we're usually traveling down this way anyway. Exactly. And so it's easier just to park here. You can just walk through the woods and down. Yeah, and down it's and really go. nice. Yeah. So reserve the park closest. This isn't that big now, no. but reserve this part for beach users too. So, 
So since we are talking about this over here and this over here, would there be, I mean, you could actually just put a designated parking area, like, just thinking in the future, because mm -hmm. like, just thinking in the future of having, like, you could have kind of a triangular use parking area that would fill at least some of that, because this is going to be a right away that we'll, that they'll always need, but at least, yeah. at least between in, in at least between this right away and this right away, what about for future plans use? You could actually just say this is going to be a designated parking area for this recreation type of thing. And That's so, what I was thinking. Yeah. Mark out here, so that closest to the beach and this closest to them. How far out are you referring to? Because is that you know how how, do you, how can you delineate that sooner than later? Uh, because it's going to continue to be a a challenge unless we, you know. Yeah, I, I think the sooner the better on that type of thing because mm -hmm. just with the demand on land, the sooner you put a stake in the ground on something and plan it for future use, exactly. the more likely it will be that way. And so I do think that coming up with some kind of permanent parking um, in that area and that, that we that the city would designate a permanent spot for future use mm -hmm. for parking mm -hmm. that is not that is not allowed to be used for like boat leasing. Or a shipyard type of thing that yeah, would be kind of the direction that you expand. Can. No, as they continue to move stuff, the Jags going to continue to expand. Yeah, yeah. And, yeah, and the SMIC expansion plan does is, is like this is, you know, running utilities and mm -hmm. Um, mm -hmm. and compacting things so that the ship lifts, mm -hmm. so that the ship lifts can move. Jags going to it's going back into here, and so mm -hmm. and you know, future use is also to make use of that land too, and so. Um, so anyway, I do think that. Like that. Yeah. To put our stake in the ground soon. What's yeah. the, do you go like this then to get to this parking lot or do you have to go through there? So th th this right here is kind of the, like the way I would say that's technically like the preferred method is to come down Olga. Most people just cut to the shipyard. They would come like here. I mean, I do it too. Um, but come up and drive up and around this direction or else too it's, depending on, sometimes this fills up with water, yeah, and it gets, it's, 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 like, this yeah. is, it turns into like a swamp back in here. And, so, like, and so, so you come back up through here, and mm -hmm. it, so you come up um, either uh, Mustang or Jellison. But yeah, I, would say, I would say the outer route is Jellison to Olga, and then back down through the It road depends road. on what the weather's like and what kind of vehicle you have. Right. <laughs> Very much, yeah. How brave you're feeling. Okay. You should have a signage out there in addition. It says four-wheel drive vehicles only pass this point. No. <laughs> well, yeah, we're not supposed to do that. The, the official public access is down Mustang That's to right. this one with this dolphin. Mm -hmm. But since Jag has come, this road is maintained. Yeah. And yeah. this one's it's, not. It's much better. Yeah, it's maintained. Yeah, it's around, yeah. We might want to make a note that maybe we should change the public access route. Because you can't tell people that, well, you're only allowed on this road when it's not even maintained. So that would just be a process. Know, I've never used that room. Let's change the public just come up and take in this, you know, yeah. right. it's, it's, it's and just pull down here and just kind of follow where everybody else goes. Right, you know? right. Because this road is nice, but if they don't plow it, you can't use mm -hmm. it. Yeah, that was before all the action. We need to designate a permanent parking spot First, that for that area. Yeah. That's the priority. And the city owns all of them. that. Yep. So the city could say, well, let's put up some saw horses with signs on it and, and our seats. Until you get the there. permanent structures in to. Right. Yeah. And then you can kind of play around with it and see how that works out. Mm -hmm. Is this working? Is this a big flow for the beach users? And then put a more permanent structure in, maybe some, right some sort of fencing of some sort to sort of mm -hmm. keep them, maybe not boxed in, but at least separated out right. enough. Yeah, I mean, I think if we start, if we put up a sign and get people starting there, maybe they'll continue to kind of just park there. But I think um, Jason's right. If we just claim it as parking sooner than later, mm -hmm. it's that's the better idea. And yeah. especially this area here. Get the rocks up. No. Or initially. Get the signs up to keep, yeah. keep Jag from parking. Parking there. Prime oh, so in that part, that area parking. right there. Right there is prime beach parking. When, when you can't go down there. So that's why I put all this mm -hmm. into the Fourth of July Beach Park. So the not allow this stuff though, then you, then you can actually then control the access and do the handicapped thing and all the rest of that stuff once you get the land right. brought up and then you put right. the, the handicapped access and just more formalized walking trail, I guess, if nothing else. Mm -hmm. Yeah, we could put signs in a couple of different places and just say, 
4th of July beach excess parking or something like mm -hmm. that. What would be the official procedure to make that happen? Um, I think there's different pieces to it that require different procedures. Um, one would be um, you know, at a deeper level, you probably want to do some type of like replot uh, mm -hmm. for to designate the parking area for future use. So it's so it's kind of designated out mm -hmm. right that that way. Right. So that it is actually platted as like a parking right. a specific parking right. area. Um, okay. And so I think, but but I do think sense. that that type of action, like this, is like some of these most well, well, city land use would have to be. You take that, recommend that up to city council, mm -hmm. saying, hey, this is. From the mini land plan, these are some specifics that we would like to get city council kind of approval and direction on because some of it would, some of that requires spending money, right. and so that would have to be at the council level. So I think uh, this this commission could make like very specific like a Fourth of July beach plan that would have recommendations in it, mm -hmm. and that they could forward that on to council as part of kind of like basically what it is. It's a specific plan for a specific the, area, yeah. Specific area in that, that's within the Muni land plan because that's yeah. really what we're working on here. Mm -hmm. um, Do we have to um, since there it is the Muni land plan and, and Jag is not technically part of that at all because they're just using free land there. I guess our <laughs> land that um, you know that's is it would that just be a subset within the the Jag the greater uh, the greater Smick area or a whole? Yes, yeah, so that, that's just considered the greater Smick area because it's kind of yeah. like undesignated since it hasn't been. Sorry. Exactly. Um, since it hasn't been like replatted as for like with, with a plan around it, and so it is just part of the greater kind of like we have this area, some of these flow through areas, this back area here is just mm -hmm. land, like city land, that's kind of just part of a greater thing, and there's chunks sticking mm -hmm. out of it that, that's been replatted for lease. Right, and it's mostly industrial though, even though it's just all industrial. Mm -hmm. yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah. yeah, even though it looks like it's park. <laughs> yeah, that. Yeah. <laughs> so this has been replanted, though, hasn't it? Mm -hmm. Yeah. So there yeah. should be a couple lines in here. Yep. And yeah, that will be okay. once that's final. Once it goes through the ah. the borough. It takes a long time, doesn't it? Yeah, it's taking about uh, mm. it's 120 days right now. It's kind of there. They said that's the it'll happen. It won't happen outside that. So. So can we go ahead and try to designate a parking spot like that, so that encompasses all of that treed edge and the triangle. The edge of that way, the, yeah. So the Sorel is still here with the easement. And this too. Yeah, and you can't take off the cul de sac. That's the call the second that's the the call So right there. Yeah. Yeah. But then you still have to check this thing here. No, well, it's a call to And actually, if, if you check my little map here, yeah, it does you would not know that's a call to set. It's got parking in there. But these trees are not that far over, so that's why I need this over here. Okay, well. Yeah. Big, as big as possible. So it's sort of lined up with the edge of this. Just to make yeah, because I was about to say, bring it to the edge up. of the road. Yeah. It just isn't just up. one big parking lot there. They can but allowing Jag to have their parking in front, which they seem to enjoy. Are you guys okay with? Yeah, you guys Yeah, you guys make the recommendation to us, and, I'd and like uh, to I don't see like any. I'd like to make a recommendation to pretty much. Is that, yes, if you guys want to what Carol's got right here. here. Yeah. Is there a reason we wouldn't make. This, I'm just trying to understand why we wouldn't make that a parking area. We would. Okay. Get your yeah. <laughs> yeah, it would go all the way. It, it would go all the way down to here, right? No, you could take over here. Here. I included it yeah, in the new plat. Oh. Be, so all, two, all of this is in the new plat. Okay. So it's, it's, I see what you're saying. Right. So that's what we would. Yeah, so that. so you can include that. It's just a little different. But this is a parking area. It basically gives you access to your parking area. Yeah, yeah. That's for the beach. So could there be. All an that. immediate recommendation no, for city council to direct city administration to put signage out there yes. for parking, mm -hmm. and then yes. secondary action for replat when you know funds or or some requests that that area gets replatted, that then it gets replatted as parking. Mm -hmm. Yes, please. Yes, it's great. In, in in general, do we want to? What you guys kind of dropped up today. Um, 
obviously you'll have to officially approve. Mm -hmm. So what we would bring back kind of like a plan, whatever you guys come come to us, and they'll bring that back to, to you guys to, to a meeting, yeah, and then yeah. you guys would approve this as a specific recommendation to the Muni land plan. And then we could also bring that as an attack, like kind of an outside piece to the Muni land plan before council. Would that have to go to public hearing? Um, I, I think because it's part of the Muni land plan, it probably would if it's a specific part. I guess like the bouncer up Brenda or whoever yeah. figure that out. Yeah, it might need to be a public hearing at this level and that level one too, possibly. At least it gets the ideas out yeah. to the wider public. Yeah. I have a question. Now, you're making JAG parking though, but this is a road going through here, isn't it? It's not no. a road. It's, it's, it's just this thing here. Real roads here. The right of way yeah, is Sorrel, there. Okay. Sorrel, Sorrel, so this Sorrel. is just where people are driving. Yeah. There's yeah. service roads okay. it's, that are not. It's still city land roads. that they're just driving on. Yeah. Well, it's not a flat road. Yeah. Right. Okay. Just, I just, mm -hmm. Which with the current replat that just went through, yep. it's going to cut off that access anyway. Anyway. Okay. Yep. Yeah. Yep. So I would, I would imagine that that there will be like fence line that's run further back. Yeah, did Sorry. they get from here to like here? Yeah, it's, it's there yeah. and then don't hook over there. I think it's about that area. Yeah. 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 And so, so that that will actually be kind of cut off. Mm -hmm. So yeah. So it'll make everybody. Go around anywhere, and so they'll come right around here and put them over your parking signs. Right. Well, yeah. yeah. right. Is this maintained? Sorrel? Yeah. Sorrel? Yeah. 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 Sorrel. How, how it goes down here? Yes. Oh, yeah. Yeah. It is yeah. maintained. Okay. Yeah. Mm, yeah. The reason it's Sorrel, jagged, it's really mostly. weird, but this is Sorrel here, mm -hmm. and it used to go through. It used to go through like that, and then the shipyard happened, so they blocked it off, and that's. This ends at the fence. Right? Mm -hmm. Yeah, it got it so got inter it got internally vacated at one point. Yeah. Of. So so this this basically got this basically got added to the city to to, to the city land in here or to this mm -hmm. parcel of land in here. So this is actually road is has is now vacated. Yeah. Um, to that point. So this needs a cul-de-sac, and this segment needs a new name. That's why I suggest keeping in keeping with it. Coast Guard Cutter names out there. Mm -hmm. But it's real confusing. Like, why is Sorrel over there when it ends here? But that's why it was it's an interrupted room. We are letting it speak for Yeah. So, part of that um, unit plan amendment would also be to make this the public make access. Make all the access. And not Delphi. Mm -hmm. Yeah, that's fine. If yeah. Jack's going to use. That and we're going to keep that clean. There's no right. reason to have two. Right. Mm -hmm. It's the better road anyway. Mm -hmm. So the only other question I have is if this is going to continue to move back, mm -hmm. you know, Jag, then the public access can go right through their yard. Uh, they're not taking over the road. They're just going to the edge of it. Oh. They can't. They can't. We'd have to vacate an yeah. official yeah, road. Yeah, this is an official, official road, road right yeah. now. Yeah. It's a public right So if, yeah. this, if they continue to do that, then something will. They're going to have to come up with some other way of handling yeah. 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 So Okay. So then the first thing is just the identify. You identify at least the things that go forward. You'll work on uh, mm -hmm. identifying the parking areas that protect those. Mm -hmm. um, and so, so we have the, what, what I have kind of go down is, is the designated parking areas mm -hmm. like you talked about. Yeah. Right, um, from all the way up. Yeah, yeah up, up into here. Mm -hmm. um, we have kind of filling this in a little bit, so at least it doesn't puddle, uh, but maintaining some parking areas there uh, for handicap. Um, obviously, we want to have signage for parking and kind of, and the other thing I thought about too is I know that they've done it down here, is that you could also use kind of some rocks in the area, and it's kind mm -hmm. of a, yeah, a piece that nice. you could, at least in the meantime, too. Until we get those. Because the well, software rock, rock, they just might move. Rocks them. are cheap. They blow. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> they blow away, too. <laughs> you can pull rocks from the quarry up in there, too. But that would be something where you could at least kind of help people understand of like the parking yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah. yeah. Now, the That's signage is, now, do we have some, I mean, I know we have some very restrictive signage stuff. Do we, or do we have something that's, uh, that would be adequate for people to uh, to use. I mean, we have stuff that's downtown, you know, down in the harbor and different things like this. Would that be the same kind of signage we would consider, or is there something altogether different? Um, well, I think if you're trying to establish a new parking pattern, uh, you again, this is like whatever you guys want to recommend. This would be one thought. But if you're trying to reestablish this parking pattern, this is thrown off a little bit here. But you know, you could have no parking signs like right along 
road here so that you're trying to get people to park kind of in your designated area and keep this road open for mm -hmm. actually traffic and people driving people driving in and out yeah. And, yeah, yeah and so you would have like no parking signs in this area kind of like they have in certain parts of town of like you know you just have a flat section where you can't park along the road so it right. just keeps that right away wide and open and then have mm -hmm. spots around here where you have designated for parking and, and even just to train even, even, even just to train people yeah, even just to train people, mm -hmm. yeah, you could have B2s only. Uh, but even just to train people, you could even probably see if Parks and Rec would be willing to go and uh, paint some lines on the ground. Mm -hmm. Just that, that that's a way of kind of start, start so repatterning re 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 people. Yeah. Yeah. Um, so. yeah, I like that with the no parking along the back edge because I wouldn't want to get in the way of Jag bringing trucks and, oh, and stuff in there. Mm -hmm. And, you know, they access their lot there, and mm -hmm. that's... That's good, so I don't, yeah. I don't want to get in their way, but I want to have a you know a designated parking spot like that with rocks. And the harbor has been so helpful. They they put the no you probably noticed the no camping sign, mm -hmm. that red one, mm -hmm. but blew down. They put it back up, um, and they put up the no vehicles beyond the parking lot it's because we don't want people driving on there. Um, and then of course the harbor did as best a the job they could, bringing in gravel and trying to raise it and making a drainage ditch. So I'm thinking for striping, maybe the harbor would be a better choice at yeah, like this time. They, they might want to be. Um, so sort of just depend, well, yeah, it just depends on who is, yeah, how they want to look at that. It, it is technically the harbor's domain as it's its current, yes. Mm -hmm. They're good. They're really good at yeah, it. Yeah, they are good. So do they need to be part of the conversation then? Mm -hmm. I guess we're going to have to work through them as well. Or, mm -hmm you know, propose what we have here and then see what Norman crew have to say about um, what, you know, what that is going to, because I'm sure they've got plans for stuff out there as well, mm -hmm. and I just don't want to make sure we're not stepping on each other. Right. Mm -hmm. Very good. Yeah. Because we have plans for them. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Um, the other piece I want to make sure is talking about the reef plat, the, the, the platting, any platting action around here too, which I know is a platting kind of recommendation. Mm -hmm. So yes, we can right. put put that into this overall recommendation. Right, the existing the existing parcel just goes on forever. It's just huge. Mm -hmm. I see it better. Yeah, it's on that's big, big. But place. that's why I thought, okay, let's cut it off here so that it's a discrete part that makes sense and people use all of this for kite sailing and stuff, it's all used. And that brings it up to the, the um, great water, which is not used. So just separate this huge parcel into something that's really discreet. And then as these, I went around the, um, cell, the uh, Coast Guard's tower, mm -hmm. but that thing, I think it's in the plan to move it because it's erosional. In a tsunami, you don't want your emergency tower in right a tsunami the zone, right? You know, okay, it should right go next up the to hill. it. So if, if that goes out, I'd like to incorporate that because this crumbling erosional slope is really not much good to anybody else. So make a park, make a buffer park, and just try to curve that line as much as possible to include what's not useful to anyone else as useful for the park. But I didn't want to. To boot them out before they're gone, but that would be the plan. Boot it. Well, that makes sense. If they decide, <laughs> if they decide to vacate because it's not suitable right. because of erosion, then right. Jag's not going to want to use it either. And you're right with the line; it just makes sense to add it. Just curve it, yeah. yeah. Curve it along. So who makes that? Who makes that decision? Like who comes along and looks at that and goes, "Hey, yeah, that would have to be run by probably Norm as well, because they he controls the leases." Oh well, yeah. And um, anything harbor related, he harbor considered harbor lands. Yeah. Then he controls the pieces on, so that'd be something to have to talk with him. Yeah, we'll definitely okay. have to sit after you get this drafted out is what you have. Maybe we just have it. Do you ever have informal meetings with them before uh, another thing or something? Yeah, I, 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 I can just talk with Norm, Norm about that, or if you can have him like come talk to you guys about those things too. Yeah, the other reason I'm saying is it might save some time if there's stuff done in between time mm -hmm. and then. Because what's the point of us doing this voting on something without having the harbor right. sort of wrapped into it a little bit, mm -hmm. you know, I just trying mm -hmm. to get the economy of time. Yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah.
I think it also makes sense to tighten up this square as well instead of just letting it. Well, absolutely, yeah. It just goes up. <laughs> yeah. Well, well, it's well, more property city. There you go. Let's see, I see a problem with that. Well, I think, well, I mean, I'm even not tired from the red line on this map should be the city, city limits. Right, the city limits. limits. Right. So, so you can sure see it right behind you, Carol. Sure yeah. That whole thing there. Yeah. 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 Far it actually. It covers right clear across everything. Yeah. But then I, I mean, I think it, um, that lot, that parcel just ends right there because that's where the city okay. limit ends, right? Mm -hmm. Based on what that looks like right there on the wall, the map. Yeah, that's this line here. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And then, and then you were talking city about limits. creating like a basically creating this so that it would come up and then you would have a. So you're saying this this would be like its own parcel that would come off the breakwater. Right. Is that what I'm saying? Right. No, oh, okay, so cutting. Well, we, can, we can't wrap it around. No, no, instead of having it just be. Oh, yeah. Like, so creating a northern, northern limit there to that parcel. So it's more north. definable, and so uh, as it relates to the to SMIC, I guess, and then the, city, the rest of the city land is mm -hmm. out there, but at least it's so the new line here. Okay. Right. Yeah. I'm not a part of it. Do you guys see a problem with that? It's just sort of a sub line that. Yeah, I'd have to. I'd, yeah, I don't. I mean, I don't see a problem. I'll talk to Norm about it too. Just as to it. We'd really clean it up, and this this just hasn't been a focus for so long. Mm -hmm. Now we have some major stuff going, stuff on. going on, and I think we really have to, like you said, when we're just looking at the ground and saying, this is what people want. Well, it's more and more valuable all the time, especially with the new Coast Guard. Stuff right. coming in as well. Yeah. That's mm -hmm. going to create. It's actually smoke. getting kind of urgent, I think. But if you see how much use this gets in yeah. any kind of weather, I go out there when the tides have been so high, because you can still walk a beach even though the tides are 13, 45, or whatever. You can. There's still a beach to walk. And um, every every day of the of the year, it's beautiful out there. And protect it and plan for the future. Yeah, people use it all the time. So the advantage of creating that parcel would be that then it would be easier to rezone mm -hmm. this park? Right. Yeah. Right. Which is my ultimate goal for the bridge of July. And I don't think it's taking away from anything, anybody no. else. Um, I think the use will still be the same for yeah. a lot of these things. It'll just be protected better. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Anything else that we need to consider at this area, you think, right now, or? No, I think that one's okay. Okay. So we can move on to the next one? Yeah. Which is the... Uh, Spring Creek? Yeah. Here. Yeah. Here. Is this not Jack's? <coughs> no, it's the... It's just part of the water. Sure. It's like bearings here. Mm -hmm. Something Jack. I kind of like the same, you know. Watching the whales, right? When I looked at this, I was thinking kind of the same issue where I think it would be nice to use this and not for Morgan to have parking up here. Clark, it's Carol did mention that people do want to sit and watch things. I know, but yeah, I was I was wanting that to be maybe not parking because once this this rip wrap went in most of that beach access was lost. Remember before all this was here and you used to be able to walk this whole area? Mm -hmm. That whole beach used to be, and now it's mostly just rocks. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Uh, you only have this small section over here. I thought it would be kind of nice if the parking was up here, especially for summer, your RV parking, mm -hmm. and down here you could have a recreational area for picnic benches, yeah, variety, things like walking this. around and doing stuff. They get so crowded Maybe. here. And people mm -hmm. get all jammed up, and it gets a little bit. Little it just shows how popular it is to park there. Yeah, it is. People who go fishing, you know, they, they uh -huh. park here and they walk through, mm -hmm. and then they go up here. Mm -hmm. yeah. But this isn't that much of a walk, and yeah. this is a pretty good vantage right. point. And there's a lot of if we designated an actual parking area, I don't think we'd run out of parking right there. I don't know. It gets pretty full in the summer when the fishing is hot with camping. So we have to balance 
how many campers versus how many just that's day yeah. use area. What's now? Who's over here? Is this Jag now? Who's got this area here now? City. This is yeah, sort it's of a city. staging area for that. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And the fence is pretty clear. Yeah, I've yeah. yeah. seen that fence put in. Yeah. That's fairly so new. That's so that's my line here. Just follows the fence. Yeah. But I did want to go down. It's no use to the staging area, but this beach mm -hmm. is useful for fishermen and, and walkers. So make the line follow the fence. And don't let them take any more because it used to be much. It used to be the whole thing. And now it's just there. It's there, but make the line go down to take in this this nice little beach. And then have it go straight over, and then out a certain distance from the from the edge from the beach. So if this whole area, this whole area is actually open, right? So um, why is there a fence? Right oh, why is there a fence? Why? There's for a fence. security for this area. Oh yeah, security. Fence. Yeah, for when they bring in Coast Guard ships and whatnot. This oh, is like a secure okay. area. Okay. You said this fence used to never be there. It was what ten years ago they put it in? Maybe not. No, no, less than that. Less than that. Yeah. 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 Um, yeah. yeah. Once they started bringing, once they did finish the last expansion over here mm -hmm. and started bringing um, Coast Guard ships up here, the they North put North. our yeah. fence to have a secure area. That totally makes sense. Mm -hmm. And is this where the Coast Guard is going to be building some of their stuff? I don't know exactly yeah, where they're going to build They do buildings right here. Oh, that's the area that they're going to be going into? Yeah, so this is their new, the new Coast Guard area. Oh, that looks good. Okay. And these guys just pulled out. Yeah, Bornstein. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I'm not sure why. Is this the fence? Does it continue yeah, to go like my... this? Or yeah. It's, it yeah, it's, it's a, a, it's right a right fully fenced okay. in area. So it's, it's already set up, kind of. It is. Yeah. Okay. yeah. <laughs> right there. I think that yeah. definitely yeah. taking, uh, extending along the beach would be nice. And I think as well, extend this whole section because I see people like that, that's getting more and more popular for RV camping. Mm -hmm. And at some point, I feel like Parks and Rec would, you know, use that as another, another, um, another area like the waterfront. Mm -hmm. And they could expand that area if we, right now, designated it a park, then that would give us the option later to have paid camping out there. Well, we do have Well, I mean, like, mm -hmm. it's the only, it, right now it's overflow, so it's, first, right. it's like the one, right. first cover. Yeah. Oh, the overflow next to Boulder Field is kind of the same way, but doesn't mm -hmm. use very much, but that's the kind of main overflow area. And I think most of those people are, I mean, there's obviously no utilities, it's just dry camping. Mm -hmm. um, and I think it's, it is very efficient, heavy on those mm -hmm. people. Right. Well, I don't think we're in a position right now to turn it into another actual campground. We can keep it exactly what it is, but it would be nice to make sure we designate. Get the signage and get the rest of that stuff so they get better control. Yeah. And is there, when Carol mentioned, is there a need to designate specific day use area for just people driving over the park? And sort of what's yeah. happening right here that's all the use. Uh, but you've had a lot of RVs out here too, just overnighters that I've seen. Maybe because they're not allowed down there. Yeah, so they're restricted. It's I think 19 feet or more or less. So is that sufficient space then, there for to be restricted? For, for the, the RV, only yeah, where space? the RVs are restricted, is that sufficient space to think for those day use individuals? Well, the day use could use this and up there. You know, there's too many people that can just go flow up there. But yeah, I, I don't know if we need camping this. down there. Yeah, there's no camping yeah. now. We can designate RV. this for the, day use for the fishermen that come and don't want to walk. And then have the RVs over yeah. the side. The guys that are staying, could, there, there could be more than one row. That would make it easier. But I don't like, they, um, two years ago they allowed camping along here and immediately, every mm -hmm. 10 feet, there were erosional trails down to the creek. To the creek there, yeah, that was problematic. So the yeah. road has to stay here, and then all the camping on this side. But if it's right there and you're bored, you're camping here, it's like, oh, let's go look you know, for trouble. And it was really detrimental to the creek. Do you guys mind if I ask Officer Mallory what his experience is of... Oh, yeah. Of, uh, you're welcome to participate. <laughs> <laughs> um, you can look the around. You can, I, I know what you guys have talked about. It's the, yeah, it's the overflow camping area. Um, I, I think for day use it's pretty good. I, we haven't had a lot of issues out there. 
I, last summer I think was different. Last summer was probably the busiest summer we had for like day use fishers, but um, for the most part we don't have a lot of problems out there outside of just normal camping problems. Um, so I don't know if there need to be more day use. Um, it probably wouldn't be a bad thing after last summer and all the parking along Nash Road that there was because it got pretty crazy. Yeah. So it, probably, it might not be the worst idea to designate more for it. Yeah, but the, the fog hack parking area was it was nuts. out of control. Yeah, it was nuts yeah. last year. Yeah. Out of control. Yeah, Nash Road was insane. So there was more day use, and, and the city did a good job of saying, hey, there's more parking up here where you can go fishing. It might improve that a little bit. Mm -hmm. um, but yeah. Yeah, the, okay. big, the biggest issue was just natural. <laughs> right. Right. So. right. Okay, thank you. Yep. Yeah. Do you... Is Park and Rec take care of that right now? What? Do they take care of that overflow camping area? Or does the harbor take care of that? I think that's part of it. They take care of it? The city? Yeah. yeah. Yeah, that's part two. Okay, they, they take care of that. <clears throat> the camping area is for sure theirs, but it's like that day use area kind of area, you know, it's. I mean, it's considered city land as parking, but which they take, they also manage parking, parks and rec does. Yeah, mm -hmm. parking um, slots there. So I think it's theirs by default. Mike, can I do have one concern about this line going here, which I think it's a good idea. But I'm wondering about the security protocols associated with having a Coast Guard vessel right there mm -hmm. and people getting it close. -ish. It, oh, it does, so there is a clear. Okay. Yeah. And there's a fence. It's pretty steep. You have to really work at it. You have to. I don't okay. think, as long as it's a fenced-in area, I don't. Because you know, security cutters have a lot of electronic stuff. I just, you know, just a thought to throw out there because sometimes people don't like their electronics being photographed well, and yeah. looking loose and stuff like that. Is there that. signage up there that says like this is for, like Coast Guard, like stay back? I don't think yet. Yeah. Not yet. Oh, yeah. access yeah. to this ramp. Mm -hmm. That's so good. that would kind of negate. True. That mm. concern yeah. because the public is so allowed right as well. Yeah. Okay, then if they're is not allowed doing to get in there. Okay. Now this uh, this float here is the backside is considered a transient. So yeah, then, then anybody then. can park a tie boat there um, for transient. Okay. Morage. Good. So that was a that, good thought. That argument's off. They have a huge <laughs> safety zone around them, but good. Yeah. You might have to compromise. So which one is the priority you think first? I know because Fourth of July. Okay. I think so. Okay. I agree. I know because I know we'll have to prioritize it one way or another. But I think that's you know especially establishing your footprint is important. Jason. One thing that I do think that is it's kind of it's related to this, but it's not actually it's not going to have effect on any of that down down there. It is actually you can't see it on that map, but uh, you can see it on on Carol's the that. Possibly getting an easement. Mm -hmm. um, that 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 creates, I think, a long-term type of permanency. Oh, yeah, it's not a thing. Mm -hmm. um, um, is would be to see if there could be a permanent easement put there for beach access mm -hmm. uh, from those property owners. Yeah, they're both the same property owner, aren't they? Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, yeah it, it is the same property owner. Yeah, I think that I mean, would yeah. kind of be pretty important since we already have property on this side and property on this side but everybody accesses it and uses it all oh, this is primarily fishing in the summertime yeah and I was actually like when I first began to write this map so I'm like oh that's private <laughs> land <laughs> we've always used it and I know everyone's walked up and down that beach all the time but it's always like it is private land yeah how far out is this where it says easement is that still this whole area is private yeah. land yeah yeah yeah, yeah. 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 is the person yeah. that is this this person? Are they local? But yeah, it's a it's a it's local longtime families that yeah. have, that own both of those both two properties. both of those two parcels. Um, and they actually the Nash Road. They actually gave that as a right of way through their property at one time. So are they having issues with people walking? They, I, I don't think they really. Or do they, they, they not care? They don't really they're care right like, now. Well, but, 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 but I do know that those point, parties are care. interested in selling those parcels sometime in the future. Yeah. And so I do think it would be important to um, get an easement now. To get an easement now. Um, yeah. So that, that, so I, I do think that at least that one action could kind of take care of that area for a long time if that were something that could be done. Yeah. Can we focus on trying to get an easement? There we Put go. that on the list? Yeah. 
this is going to be fake. The, the right? maps are because to, you know today not for sale tomorrow. I know it. It's yeah. on the MLS. Yeah. So yeah. that easement it would be really important. The maps aren't quite. They don't go quite far enough north, but <clears throat> to wrap another easement around, there's a, a short section where you you have to go away from the water, um, where the Sand, what is it called? Salmon? Yeah. Sockeye Point. Sockeye Point. Point. You have to cross mm -hmm. a little bit on their property to get back down to see your own tidelands. Oh. So you can go all the way around. It's really cool to go all the way around. And you mm -hmm. can get a super low tide. I've heard that you can walk all the way to Pond Beach. So you can actually it's walk. cool. Mm -hmm. um, we did that over the summer. Yeah. And a seven year old from my property caught the salmon. Neat. And they put the fire right on the beach, and they. It's so he beach. literally fed everybody, you know, Aww. this little kid, just yeah. like. It's a very it really cool, cool. It was really cool. We just have, and I had no idea you could just walk. We just walk, 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 yeah. walk. Yeah. So it, as far as That'd creating an easement, yeah. how hard is that to create an easement for a per, you know private property? Uh, that would be the. I mean, obviously, the person who wants the easement would pick it. Like the city, then like be, they're requesting one from a party, and they're like, "Yeah, we are willing to give that." Then the city would then pay for. Um, the surveying costs of putting that easement mm -hmm. in place. So that's what normally takes is if the other party is willing, then but the party requesting is the one who pays the cost for that mm -hmm. surveying. Would, and that. would they? Is there an incentive for them to allow that easement at all? I just sort of wonder if I own I, those two parcels of land, I'm not sure if I'd want to, you know, give up my personal property it, for. Well, it really kind of just depends because with where that land is and the fact that it's in front of like a. There, that's a, like a salmon area. There's the stream area. There's right. also like some wetlands areas, and so it kind of depends on what the how usable that land is there, um, because a lot of times those things require like Army Corps permits, mm -hmm. um, and a lot of like really to do anything with it. A lot of times require would require like development wise would require significant investment, yeah, investment sure. yeah. from like Corps permits, obviously the flood board and all these other types of things and so it may be one of those things where and you can go through all that and they'd be like yeah no um, it's not happening there yeah. and so it, it, it depends I guess about like if it, the land is to answer your question if the land is not really usable um, the, for development then I think obviously someone would be like yeah sure we'll create kind of a permanent mm -hmm. easement there but if it's uh, if the land we're like prime for like development like they could create like another sockeye point right there then I was just thinking of other close to. Oh, I know, I know. That, and that, yeah. that's kind of the thing is that there's all those wetlands right yeah. there. Seems so. like the part closer to Nash Road. Just to build. Because I hate to see the loss of the forest, but that would be more developable. Yeah. Yeah. And yeah. the staff. Yeah, 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 you can you can see it from there. I mean, it's pretty obvious where the wetlands yeah. are and everything. That yeah. would be your view. Over the yeah, the exactly. You, if you mm -hmm. build up here, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. that's um, private beach. That's. That's, that was my thing. If somebody wanted to build something there, why would they want to put an easement on a private yeah. place? So that's but that's the thing. But then to get back to Jason's you point is, that is the point is. <laughs> and, and I'm just saying really because like when you think about it, if you build something here and you have a nice view here, you can cut down your trees. You have, oh, a, yeah. you have a nice oh. private beach, a nice, and then all of a sudden. All the pe these people start coming and they're walking on your property and you're like, that's and, my point. <laughs> and Mallory, <laughs> what's going on with all these people? Unless what we need to do is identify initially early on, get the move on the easement. Move on the easement. Mm -hmm. Yep. Sooner yeah. than later. I mean, it, 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 we, all, like, all, all we can do it is ask and, mm -hmm. and, and then they, you know, see what they say. They may have plans already. And, and so, but, but that would be again because that would require survey. And re replatting. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. I mean, not really well. Yeah, it would require placing easement in there, so that would be a cost that the city would take on uh, for that. So that would be something that, again, a recommendation to council. The council would have to kind of tell administration what they can. Right. Okay. Well, yeah. The public has voted with their feet. That <laughs> that's an important place for them. Most certainly. And I want to say, if it's been used. Okay. If it has been used Historical for a certain amount of years, and I want to say in Alaska it's seven years, if that has been used for seven years, it automatically becomes an easement. So you might want to look at that. 
Is that a, a uh, that's real a real estate? estate thing? Yes. Okay. Yes. Yeah. So yeah. it's a historical precedent mm -hmm. for that. Still yeah, go but go to, go to if they sell <laughs> the property, yeah, but then <laughs> it's like if ask. they sell the well, property, exactly. You just ask them. them. Yeah. But you have it in the hip pocket anyway. Right. If no. you have rules. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Because, like I said, once they're allowing the use. So once they allow the use, and they don't, I, I mean, I hate to be blunt like that, but if they, uh -huh. they're allowing the use. Mm -hmm. So technically, they would have to fight to stop the use if it's been used for, I want to say, seven years in Alaska. Interesting. Yeah. 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 So if I cut across your grass, mm -hmm. and you allow me to do it for X amount of years, and then one day you're like, hey, Victoria, stop cutting across my, my grass, I can be like, oh, you've been letting me do this for years. So. <laughs> Thank you very much. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. yeah. So We've had a few of those down that cuts people that cut down to safe way through people's lawns and stuff like yeah. this. They've been doing it for a long time. And it was, oh, yeah. if you don't stop it, yeah. Okay. They're like well, children. Yeah. If you don't you can stop ask the city attorney on the last Yeah, yeah. Well, of course. Yeah. Ask for the easement. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. That's what I'm saying. I, I hope options. we don't have to be heavy handed about it. No, no, no. no. Yeah. I don't. Okay, so, we'll so it's think, especially if they're thinking about selling anyway. I don't know. But so right now we're right now focusing on uh, 4th of July. Right. Well, yeah. I'm, I'm and, sorry. Yeah. My we map is a little farther. But we should consider that bigger view where you go across sockeye points. Just a little bit, you know, a very short time, then you drop down the city property and wrap that whole Are you thing around. this guy here, or are you talking about something further? It goes no, off the map. Further, yeah. further so it goes north. Okay. Yeah. You keep going north. It's talking about cool. points that's here. here. That's where that construction okay. thing when you come off the hill. <laughs> well, that's, uh, it's the old sawmill. It's the sawmill, yeah. Right. right across the street. It's off down Betty Cater Road, is the on the opposite, yeah. because that's the one that goes into Spring Creek. Right. You ever yeah. been down that road before? Yeah, once or twice. <laughs> yeah. yeah. You just wrap around and then it hooks on to city property north of Sockeye Point. Yeah, so this is the city yep. parcel right here. And that hooks on to a Fognet Beach. So what you're and saying is extend the easement? So, so, so the, yeah. this this parcel right here, is that a fog back or is that or is it the that's one Sockeye. Of the, that's Sockeye that Point. Is, so that, that's additional, that parcel out there is Sockeye too? Yeah. Um, Who owns that? Could you or is Courtney, could you Mark Nelson? You know Mark Nelson, yeah. Mark Nelson. Mm -hmm. yeah, then we'll know for sure. I'm not sure if he has a. Because that's changed hands so many times, I have no idea who owns that anymore. Because Gold Belt, I think, had it for a while. Right. right. Um, I know Mark Nelson's owned it for quite a while. Yeah, that's all. That's all. Soccer. A decade or so. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. But the beach is only inaccessible for just that high part where the the old dock it was. Yeah. Mill dock. Yeah, yes. Get over that, then you drop back down to the other beach. Walk around. Walk around. Wow, that's huge. Pretty cool. So that's where the extension of the easement to go wrap around all the way. Yeah. So we'd want to go through their private property and then through Sunset mm -hmm. Points. So it'd be two easements or just one slope? Yeah, because okay. there's different. Yeah, where are we talking yeah. about exactly? Like, so that's, are we talking about even farther? Yeah. So, okay. so these are the two parcels yeah, those are the two that we want to get the easement up. Yeah. And then Sockeye is right over there. So you see area. they own this beach here. That's the this easement. property owns that part of the beach. Yeah. And then this little part of the beach, when we touch it and see who owns that one. This one? You're talking about? Okay, so that's private. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So we need that little easement. But this is, I think this one's C. Yep, so yeah. then we're back on city, and then this guy. And these guys, we just Private have to get commercial. across this little bit there, and then it drops down, this whole beach is accessible, so it drop, uh, anchorage. Uh, this is, this is a city right here, mm -hmm. yeah. And that's, you're saying that's not enough right now? Yeah, because this is too high. Okay. It's, um, we need, I think that's the dot. So we mm -hmm. need to just, just connect up this little bit there. And then once you get there, sometimes mm -hmm. it's back on the city. It's going to this whole thing here. Yeah, it's city. Yeah, it's all city. Oh, well. Wow. Close to it. And then there's a part of it. And city. So we're thinking ahead. Hmm. Wow. You know, we could, we yeah. could protect that. control that, yeah. Protect that for the public. Yeah. Never, never managed to work that out. <laughs> I know. It's a <laughs> wonderful resource. Yeah. Okay. That'd be the big review.
So then we add the then we add to the the priorities or the the list of things is just the easements around uh, mm -hmm. the private property and then off the uh, uh, sorry yeah, the one little section of Sakai, I guess. Who oh, oh, did you say on that? Somebody sewer out of Anchorage. Property. It's called Sewer Properties Act, but they're out of Anchorage. Sewer Properties. Yeah, don't know. Sweet. Good. Yeah. So we talked parking, signage. Now easements. What other things we have to talk about in this thing here? <laughs> Let me find my notes. So we jump into the first part of the agenda now. I think so. Are we done with the Are we done with the second part? Or at least for now. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. What we'll do is we'll. Um, yeah. We'll kind of create something a little more formal from these pieces. Right. And then we'll make sure we discuss it with the Harbor. Yeah. Yeah. And um, yeah. And and kind of get his input from any of those items and, and see what he says and then we'll um, probably bring it back back to you guys and Yeah, test um, it off all agree and then have the public hearing then. If he's if he's on board and everything's there then do that. Have yeah we'll try and get all the cleanup done beforehand. Yeah, I mean it doesn't have to be yeah, yeah 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 but that but then right away. But then yeah have that um, as a, as a public hearing on this end is kind of an addendum to the muni land plan yeah um for those specific pieces and then we can just adopt them straight in that'd be huge and then uh mm -hmm. and then also for a recommendation to council uh with that kind of a, as a plan for those places mm -hmm. um that will take place outside of the muni land plan awesome um revision made like the major revision that we'll do again yeah that'd be an operational thing for yep. the, the administration folks to worry about yep. yeah. okay Sweet. Okay, want to jump to the next one? The first one? Yeah. Our first section? <laughs> so the first section in the agenda item was to discuss lot frontage and lot width, primarily the requirements around them and then and then also how are we how would we like to specify in code that these will be measured? Because we don't have anything in code right now that addresses either one of those. So I put some examples. I mean, the main two types of lots that we're looking at is you know, the atypical lots of cul-de-sacs and then flag lots. So on page three, you'll see examples of you know cul-de-sac mm -hmm. lots. We have the the curved lot frontage, which yeah. We're measuring, are we measuring along the curve? Are we measuring on the setback line, the 20 foot setback line? And there's some other options of some other examples of how other cities measure it. And then, and then the flag lots is the other one that we want to address. Mm -hmm. you know, how are we measuring that, that front end? Is it based on the, the stem of that flag lot or are we you know, measuring for the back again? And, and where does the setback start? So then page four has an example of, of code for flag lots from Draper, Utah. And then page five and six through, I think, page 10 that have examples of um, lot front measurement or lot width measurement from Briar Creek, Oklahoma, and then Anchorage, Alaska. So you'll see on page five, the example from Prior Creek shows that they measure lot width from that uh, center, the middle of the, the lot. And then the frontage, the street frontage measurement, they measure from the building set, set back line for the cul-de-sac. One of the biggest things I would just be thinking of is a lot of this stuff is, is uh, um, one, you know, a lot of people aren't parking, you know, they should be parking in their driveways and stuff like this, but a lot of times people have additional cars that they leave out there. The other thing, too, is snow removal. Mm -hmm. 
I mean, up on the hillside, they have cul-de-sacs and a variety of other things like this, and they're just it's super tight. Where are they putting the snow? Sorry? Where are they putting the snow? Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah, some people park it in the middle of the, the cul-de-sac. It's a big cul-de-sac, and they're able to do that, yeah. you know, because they can't move it. Or, you know, what, what can, you know, how do they move it all? So, um, is this Oklahoma place? My, that's why I was sort of wondering, right over that stuff. I'm like, well, they don't have a whole lot of snow. <laughs> <laughs> so I was sort of thinking, well, maybe they may mm -hmm. not have a, well, that to be considered. But, uh, mm -hmm. Like the uh, Utah's definitions. Yeah, the twenty. Yeah, the setback mm -hmm. or the uh, the twenty foot. You know, twenty feet back to be the start. Yeah, which one yeah. That's what the borough uses for determining lot width. They use the twenty, 20 foot, foot setback. But how do you? It just our code defines a lot by the front front. The width of the lot is the front end. It's not 20 feet back. Right. So when you're when you're doing these jigsaw puzzles, it's a lot easier to say, okay, well, you've got 60 feet. You're required to have. In the borough code, I did talk to Julie Heinemann. She's a planning specialist. So what do you do for cul-de-sacs? She said we don't have anything in our code about that, which means they're required to have 60 feet. And it was interesting when you dealt with the uh, the shed. In yeah, the shed. Mm -hmm. that, those, those were two cul-de-sacs in our city, north of Phoenix. And very generous. Mm -hmm. You know, it wasn't like we are squishing everything in. And that's what I feel we're trying to do here is just compress our town, compress our lots, squeeze people in, disregard snow, disregard parking, to try to maximize our use, and I don't, I don't like that direction, to, to make it as compressed as possible. I really like the generous. The open. Here's a cul-de-sac, 60 feet, 60 feet, 60 feet, and everyone has a, a nice size lot they can do stuff in. But some of those lots that you just approved on the hilltop are on the cul-de-sacs. They're just, they just went to really skinny. No, I'm totally unusable up here. And you try to get a rectangular lot. Look at this. You know, what are you going to do with that? It's just a bizarre thing on page six, eight page. Exactly. Mm -hmm. Like, what are you going to do with that for your lot? It's. it's <coughs> I don't think it's a, a normal, jag right here. Yeah. yeah. A it's, normal. It's bizarre. Contractor would sell it would, you know, lay it out like that, but. I think they're just showing an example of it's an example. Ways, to, ways to measure in case something does come out. I I don't know. I like having a lot of space, but I think 60 feet is a little much in the front because I don't see a problem with a smaller, not, not super small, but I don't see a problem with a smaller front if the lot opens up wider in the back. Because a lot of people, especially on a larger lots, a half acre or an acre, want to put their house in the back. Mm -hmm. And so, you know, a little smaller in the front, driveway, house in the back. How much smaller would you envision? Probably, I'm not positive. Okay. You know, that's, I guess it all depends on the actual lot size itself, because, you know, if it was a three acre lot, Mm -hmm. versus a half acre a lot, I would expect different Then 60 feet really from makes a big difference. Yeah. However, the bigger the lot, the more you could sell you by the paper, and then you're, and then you're stuck mm -hmm. with having a really restricting mm -hmm. front access. In the borough code with flag lots, um, if you had, if it, if, it, if it was smaller than 30 feet width, you had to have a note that this lot could not be subdivided. Because then you'd have what two 15 foot wide, you know, squeeze in there. So you put two RVs in there. Come yeah. You know? <laughs> um, Sorry. So you have to think about if the lot's big enough, it could be subdivided, and then what? What are you going to do with? True, but mm -hmm. then if you required your frontage to be X amount, uh -huh. they couldn't subdivide it because they wouldn't fulfill that. Okay. Yeah, amount. the 60 so feet was okay. you, yeah, could, could. you know, then you wouldn't have to really worry about that. If you if you said X amount, and they had 
two that didn't meet that, then they just couldn't subdivide. Mm -hmm. Just order, make sure your minimum is big enough. Yeah. yeah. The minimum should be big enough for, I think, for you know, normal. Um, what is the Homer? Do we have anything for Homer? <laughs> um, I was trying to figure out another somebody else on the actual peninsula as well. It seems to be and it looks more something that's a little more crammed in like we are okay. and not quite just all flat open areas. Um, Jason? Uh, one thing I wanted to mention, um, having grown up in lived in places that are both a little bit flat, like kind of on the front range of Colorado. Like my thing, you know, it's like yeah. you're so flat. And everything is, everything is very gridded. Um, but then when you add geography into it, um, like having like West Hills of Portland, where like lots of all these weird directions are not because they have to like fit weird things on the hillsides and they get big lots, but the, because of the turns, it's like nothing can be gridded anymore. And so you have to make kind of these concessions. And so I think part of it too is it's tough for us to like, we're sort of lumpy. What's that? We're sort of lumpy here, too. Yeah, I mean, like, <laughs> open farmland Colorado, it's like everything was on a mile grid. You know how long uh -huh. the road was because yeah. everything's gridded out perfectly and every, like, neighborhoods were gridded out because it was flat. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. But we, we have this challenge. Like, in some of our areas, it's not, like, downtown area. It's great. Like, we have relatively flat land, so, like, you can do, like, a 30 frontage and buy 100, and it all works out. Mm -hmm. But then you get up in some of the hills that we're now developing and that trying to put something that's square or rectangular on something to make any good use of the lands nearly in possible and so I just see it's like you're almost dealing like you have to look at non-geographic non land like that's flat and then you have to look at like how do you compensate for the geography mm -hmm. of hills and turns and and making making kind of compensation for that and that's where I see this is really kind of the one of the bigger issues here is that when we get into stuff like that you can't grid out and square stuff up very well because of the the, the yeah. topography I think everything looks good on paper, but once they actually start trying to put it in, into place, I think they're going to have a maybe a more difficult time. They're going to have to make some some concessions as to um, or you know adjustments to how they've got the stuff printed out and laid out because otherwise it it won't yeah. work out. I mean, and I don't know. Um, I'm reflecting back on what they look like. You know, if we did the 20 foot setback or whatever it was to determine um, the the frontage on that, a lot of those lots weren't that. Huge. I mean, they weren't like so tightly triangled. They were a little wider. Um, so I'm hoping that they will be, you know, they won't be that problematic as far as having such a short, you know, frontage where they're, you know, on, you know, from, you know, when they start actually putting it in, like particularly in the cul-de-sac areas like that. The other thing is they can request a variance mm -hmm. because of topography that they do have challenges dealing with this particular lot. So. I would rather deal with it, like, here's our code, we want enough space for s snow disposal, storage, and parking, and light, and all those other wonderful things. And if your lot has certain, like, you have a creek, there's a whole list in our code. If you have a creek, if you have a, a hill, you know, wetlands, then you can come for variance, and we'll work with you so you have use of your lot. But I prefer that um, approach to making exceptions rather than make the whole thing exceptions where they wouldn't really be needed. Can I, I just want to point out something to you in your discussion to consider and, and discuss. In our current city code on page 14 of your, of your packet, the only specification that we have for lot frontage is in note B, and that's you know 30 foot minimum lot frontage in the neighborhoods south of um, the Seward Highway Phoenix Road intersection, mm -hmm. and then 60 foot minimum north of that. But it's just for, for single family homes. Mm -hmm. um, in my research of when that was put into code, there was nothing in the minutes or the reasoning to explain why single family, single family homes were the one you know type of construction that was targeted so i'm just i just want to open that up to you for discussion as well like if you know the reasoning behind that 
Um, is that something the, valid? That the we location, be? why it's some one standards one place and one standards different? Yeah, why why the split in standards and why singling out just single family homes? Older stuff you know? was down below, and like I live on a thirty by basically my original I think federal original town site homes. The original mm -hmm. townsite homes, and it's on Fourth Avenue. And my a lot is 30 by 100, mm -hmm. and I have a, technically a lot and a half, which is still pretty tiny, mm -hmm. but it's 45. Mm -hmm. But I think that's the old, mm -hmm. the old way of doing it. But so yeah, probably because it was planted that way. Yeah. yeah. But any multifamily dwelling home, <clears throat> duplex, multifamily dwelling, um, they wouldn't have to have a 60 foot lot frontage. According to this, yeah, it's not. This only yeah, applies to single family. Yeah. Anyway, so I'm just putting that out there to consider. Yeah. Yeah. Why? Why yeah. are you yeah. single out single family homes? And is it something that needs to still be singled out? Do we need to broaden that? Yeah. What's the logic? Why? It's, yeah. Well, yeah. I feel like we definitely need to change that. But should we figure out how we're going to measure it before we figure out how big it needs to be? Is there been a problem with measuring from the front? front? Just, is that front Just with the, the curve mm -hmm. lot front edges. Mm -hmm. You can measure 60 feet, mm -hmm. Well, yeah, you can, I mean, you can measure along the curve, but just the fact that it's, it's atypical from a straight lot line, so it's, mm -hmm. to give them the same requirement of having to have that full 60 foot, it seems, you know, that we should have it a different, or a more standard way of measuring the size just along the along that front lot line. Do we have a problem with measuring? I mean, are we seeing an issue with measuring just running a, a roller tape across it and coming up with a... Well, no, I don't mean in the surveys. The, the surveyor will give you a measurement of that curve. <clears throat> so it's not... It's just I mean, where to measure. Can, yeah, we can get the measurement. It's just... Is that... Because it's more difficult for mm -hmm. in a cul-de-sac to, you know, the, the, to get that full 60 feet. They're now going to have to increase their lot mm -hmm. size yeah. a lot more drastically than if they were just rectangles. Well, if they mm -hmm. had a bigger cul-de-sac and a bigger uh, footprint for the, uh, it had all the things there, and then they actually would have a bigger turnaround of the concrete area or whatever. If was, that was bigger, they'd be they'd get to sixty a lot easier because the slope mm -hmm. as some of those cul de sacs are so small, that's mm -hmm. why it's so crunched up in the begin in, in the beginning or in the front of their, their property. But if they had a bigger uh, area to ha to drive around in, I guess then that then you, you could get to sixty a lot easier. And then mm -hmm. then it would also help with the snow stuff and other parking mm -hmm. and things like this. The land would be a little smaller. Obviously, for whomever is is got there, but I can't imagine be that much smaller. Is that front lot isn't getting useful anyway to speak of. Mm -hmm. What's our minimum requirements for a cul de sac? Well, it's a 60 foot right away, so. What's that, the end of the diameter of a cul de sac? Yeah, that's a good question. What's the circumference? Right? I'm just thinking diameter, which, oh. yeah, whatever. Yeah, I'm not that. But um, I don't know if there's a standard, universal standard or something like that, because I know in Anchorage, mm -hmm. There's some cul-de-sacs that I'm like... That are ridiculous. Oh, yeah. yeah there are There's some that are so tiny, but then there's some that are like massive. You know, you can just... Mm -hmm. So they just... You can park a couple RVs and then the kids can still have time. Oh, Exa so exactly. Exactly. So, 60-foot right of way, it bulges out. Yeah. And so, and so it's like a... Yeah. Well, this is under... Yeah, like dictate a little bit about... How Title 8. Yeah, that's what I want to say. If you determine what the, the circumference or the diameter of the driving yeah, I think area is, a turning that. radius of a turning radius of sixty feet. So, okay. so from the middle of this circle, you have to be thirty feet. So it's a radius. That's Did you it? say sixty feet radius? Sixty feet. Sixty foot radius. 60 so it's one hundred and eighty feet across. So it's interesting. Feet across. When we say the right of way is sixty feet, the road is only about twenty four to twenty two to twenty four feet wide. The right, of, with the right of way, the road only fills itself, so when you're looking at a map, when you say 60 feet, yeah. the, the road itself right. is 22 to right. 24 feet wide, depending right. on that spec. So when you look at, so they could have a 60 foot, the cul-de-sac, like the, you normally don't look at the roads, because mm -hmm. it's paved or whatever around yeah. there. Mm -hmm. So you're probably looking at, um, 
What'd you say? Well, this actually is only for. This is under Title Eight for mobile home parks, so I don't know. Well, I guess we don't have anything specific for like the. Yeah, it's hard because to me, I think if you started with that and there was a standard by which you have that, that yeah. the bulb at the top of the, the road, so to speak, mm -hmm. if that's the determination of how how that's standard, then everything else sort of falls in around yeah. it. What the standard mm -hmm. be, so you don't have to sort of have a... Posture. I'd like to know the smallest cul-de-sacs that we're allowing, and then I feel like if we, if we know how small they are, then that would make it easier to figure out... How you small do? the frontage should be, be, or yeah. how what size? Do not be like small, but what size, size the frontage should be? Yeah, the yeah. middle. Because right now we're, we're throwing out numbers, yeah. but right. what? But is why the, is it? Yeah, yeah. yeah. There's, have to have there's a, a code because the fire department tracks the blah blah yeah. blah. So it's there somewhere. I don't know where it is. Maybe yeah, we should start with that. The fire code. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, I think I'd like to start with that because then we know if it's in code the smallest. Uh, circumference or diameter of the, the paved area that mm -hmm. a cul-de-sac yeah. is going to be, then the, the properties fall around it naturally. Mm -hmm. Naturally, and it would be you could just pencil it out and say each one is going to be X big because that's an appropriate size. And ideally, to say should forty be or sixty or whatever it winds up being. Yeah. You know, we could have that argument later. I guess we start with that one standard first, determine mm -hmm. that, put the properties around it, and then see or you know conceptually put the properties around it and then see what is the best thing in terms of um, whether it's the right at the road, you know, right at the front yard where it meets the road or does it have to be 10 or 20 feet back to determine what the um, the frontage is. But I think it's still, to me, I think it's pretty important. It's snow removal, parking, and just, you know, congestion in those areas. I mean, yeah, growing up in New York, I know congestion. So. I think we can figure that all out by knowing what we're, what the minimum we're going to yeah. allow. If we know the minimum minimum size we're going to allow, then we can look at what the proper yeah the natural size is. Yeah. Yeah. Mm -hmm. I like measuring just right across the front of the curve. Well, it's easier because yeah. Wheels and just walking right around mm -hmm. the edge and boom, you're done. Mm -hmm. It's less calculating instead of being 20 feet. How far is back 20 feet? Or is where is the 20 feet really? Or yeah. whatever. You can fudge that pretty easily. Mm -hmm. um, Does the fire department have any. I, I saw it in, what was it, the Utah one or something? They said flag lots 20 feet. That's a for and less, Yeah. Unless uh, something by fire marshal. Uh, do we. Does the fire department have any input on it's what It's a greater staff would be required by the fire marshal based on access yeah. width requirements. So the minimum is 20 feet of paved access width, but the greater staff width may be required to, but based on the fire marshal. Yeah. So do we have any information from Do they have any input on what they... We could ask, but I know that like the ones that we've seen have, what were they at, like 30? The ones that we do have are... Mm -hmm, 30 they're, feet. They were 30 feet. 30 feet. One. Yeah, so they were... They are 20. That seems... I mean, I that's as, almost as wide as that's as paving wise. It's as wide as a two lane road. It's wider than yeah. a two lane road. Okay. So that's. Then in Anchorage code, they require 30 feet when both public water and sewer systems are needed to serve a residential lot. I like the survey. It seems like enough yeah. space. Yeah, I, don't know, I just think like about, you know, responding to something as either a firefighter or an ambulance person mm -hmm. or something like this, going to that, and then you've got a ton of snow, you've got all these other things that you have to negotiate. People are parked in, in the cul-de-sac and not in their driveways. And mm -hmm. Yeah, well, that's a different issue. Mm -hmm. but, still, but yeah, but it, it, is, a, it is a hassle. Uh, yeah. Yeah. So um, in the 2018 International Fire Code, it says that uh, where a fire hydrant is located, on a, on a road in the on a like an end of a cul-de-sac, it would need a diameter of 96 feet. And if so there isn't a, a fire hydrant, or is there always? I mean, there should be. There should, should always be, be one. Always okay. one in yeah. a cul-de-sac, right? Okay. So <coughs> it's like yeah, 33 foot. Like, you said that's for us. Yeah. <laughs> <But> 96. <laughs> 96. What is this? Is like, yeah. Forty. No. <laughs> <laughs> now, now I'm. Now I'm. So I'm totally thinking. No, are there always fire hydrants in cold stacks? I don't think there are. How many cold stacks do we have here? We're going to find out. There has to be a fire somewhere, at least within a certain distance of. of uh, 
I'm from, from okay. I'm from Jersey. Right. There has to be one in order for you to have uh, any kind of insurance on your property. So. So. Um, um, question. Yeah. I don't think there's a fire hydrant on my property. Now that I'm thinking, like. <laughs> Oh my God! Don't think I'll find it. How many oh yeah, there's one. Your caddy. Oh, I'll find it. It's a couple hundred feet. It's a couple hundred. Yeah. It's like I think it's like two hundred feet. Yeah, we stretch a hose up. There's a yeah. certain there's right. a certain ratio to yeah. it. Yeah, yeah. It's everywhere. Yeah. Uh, maybe it's even longer. So where do we rein us in and see where we're going with this? Well, first I think what I like the diameter of the. I, I honestly believe that we should figure out the diameter of the the the, the, the paved road of that. What's if there is a standard out there? Because we could talk all day about what the frontage is. Of the thing, but if we don't know what the start point is, where to put the property, I'm guessing, then we can start talking from there. Because you know, if you have too tiny a a pavement place, then then it throws everything else off. Yeah, I would like to know the smallest. It, it's well, it's not necessarily the pavement, but the public right of way. What is the? Yeah, that's. I'm sort of thinking about. Yeah, I see what you're the saying. the pavement is, is a small part of that. Yeah, the public right of way allows for. Utilities, maybe, and sidewalks, and snow, and cars. Yeah, yeah that's true, see, because if people are parking numbers. right there, if there's cars there, mm -hmm. for whatever reason, because parking's allowed there, then, and then, then if, you know, ambulances or, mm -hmm. you know, fire engines or whatever have to get in there, then if it's too crowded, you can have, right. you have to allow that, because that's sort of like the door away thing. Right. You can't do anything there if right. the people are on the road, right. there's certain things. So. Don't want to repeat our mistakes. Yeah. I mean, so, does that sound like a... So let's go measure there and make it bigger. Well, sorry, I won't be measuring okay. <laughs> Let's go, let's go Chopping there. Chopping off people's lawns. Measure, measure, you know. measure that and then say, okay, the new standard is... Yeah, I mean, at least we've got something... It has to be with. bigger than this. Mm -hmm. yeah. But like, the, like your example, as you say, Anchorage is sort of a, um, bit of a variety of, of, you know, things. You have tiny, tiny cul-de-sacs and then you have other ones that are huge. It's uh, yeah. cars seem to be about a hundred feet. Just right. Diameter. Yeah, diameter. Are you on the borough website? No, I'm just no. I'm just running around on the I parcel dealer. Isn't that fun? Section. As, I mean, as, as far as I can see, I'm just looking around at any cul de sac. Right, right. Great beer circle. Isn't it two? They all seem to be a section. Yeah, how many cul de sacs? Yeah, they all seem to be about a hundred. I'm, I'm just looking at everywhere I see one. Feel like that would correspond area. with what? I think we need to have some clarity yeah. on that. So, for future development, like how? Yeah. yeah. So that makes sense. The thing is, too, is that it was three or four. Um, yeah, we need to have some clarity. Oh, you remember it? <laughs> on those types of things, because so they're all like there's two large parcels that you're right. Right. right there. Yeah, that's right. Here? Are there any that you yeah. think are like a, yeah, no, I like agree. a problem um, child that, that if there's an emergency? Not really. Yeah, the great bird, no. great bird circle. Yeah, we get into well, a I feel like we don't have. And then towards the Safeway, we have these more cut in there. There is one right there. It's right now. Yeah, that circle. Yeah, that's probably the smallest one. Okay, I'll look at that one. And because there's a new house there, it's pretty small. Yeah, no I think the, 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 the yeah. pavement yeah. might be smaller. I guess I'm going to ask this. What should we do to yeah, move that along to try to get well, the section up there? Down yeah. I don't know if we need to write all. I mean, this is like my volume. I know. I don't think it's calibrated. I can change the numbers on it. It does have a little bit of something that you guys would be happy with. Yeah. We could change numbers on all of this. Like I definitely want to get but they seem to be look at what the minimum call is mm -hmm. yeah. before I so, know uh, what I want to do for minimum bonds. Uh, yeah, that's um, uh, frontage because that's a hard number to pick out unless you know what your minimum is going to be. Right. So. And then when you're looking at frontage in respect to like if everyone's frontage just had like 50 feet, but they're two acre frontages, it's like yeah, yeah, exactly. You know, so it's I think it's like that lot size, but you don't want like a <clears throat> You don't like a slice of a pie. Like Twenty yeah, foot. That's, that's, that's like a, that's like a three thousand. You know, I mean, there's. It, it, it's got to be in proportion to each other. So. I guess what I was talking to Jason about. First, I'd like to see us have a section in our code that deals with lot with call sacks and fly lots with definitions. I don't think we need to reinvent the wheel. Some of these are pretty good. Obviously, and they work in other places. Yeah, and I and if they work other places, I don't think we need to. You know, we could pick somebody's that we like or that lives close to us or whatever and then change the numbers to suit our particular oh, area. Absolutely. And oh. 
when it comes to the cul-de-sacs, I'd like to see what our minimum is before we That's make a decision on that because right. that makes a big difference. If right. they're huge, if they're small, it, it just throws everything right. off. Right. Um, and then yeah, they're going measuring to how we're going to measure them. Uh, I think yeah. there's some pretty good examples. Uh, I like doing it right around the edge, but mm -hmm. we need to continue talking about that. We have flag lots already yeah. out there with 30 feet. But that that is in some, one, of, I mean, some of the other people's code. You don't have a lot there. Like 30 feet for that's the front. Burrow. Yeah, the burrow. Yeah. Might be a good thing to stick with for that. So. Mm -hmm. I think that maybe administration could put together. Actually, it's 20 feet. Is it 20 feet? The access portion. I like the Not less than 30. I know. Um, yeah. I think 30 feet. Put together a small group of definitions that we mm -hmm. could work with from there. Mm -hmm. So this is a pretty good. This is a pretty good map. Yeah, to get sure. something else going in there, because we'll otherwise we won't have a standard by which other people can. This, this is the same stuff. It's just a PDF of the plan, um, and it has the. So it's showing a fifty foot radius on the full like set. Like measuring lot frontage on the, the front edge. Yeah, I would like to measure call the sack lot frontages on the front edge. Okay. Yeah. And the and the flag lots. Mm -hmm. Yeah, because this even this would be discussion to just determine what that minimum. Yes. So and when you it. when you look at this, some of these are like 54. Some of them are you know pretty yeah, decent. But, but then you got some that is 30 something, and you can really see them. Well, yeah, that one. Well, yeah, the this is the one from um, here. what's it called the hilltop. Yeah. Right. Or, I don't think no, that's right. this. This is. But you know, I don't. I don't oh, know but that, they have that, that whole side. Not, that might not be the yeah, they have, yeah, they have this a, whole side. That's just the plot that isn't done yet. I'd like to find out what code actually says. says. Yeah. Because yeah. we can look at pictures all day long, but that's not really going to tell us anything. We don't actually know what we're requiring of people. Yeah, well, I'm just saying, you know, I mean, this is what we have, and just trying to understand oh. if they make yeah. sense. Yeah. It'd be nice to have a really nice example yeah. where yeah. everything was to go. <laughs> yeah. I guess so, too, but one, you have to establish code, and the second, two is then you have somebody to be able to adapt to it. But I also think, too, is what Jason was bringing up earlier, is that the variation of the topography mm -hmm. is going to affect what they, somebody can do and what they can't do. You know? Yeah. So that's we probably don't know what and, we allow them. And I think we need to make allowances for the like the topography. Like I said, if you have like a ten thousand I don't know, ten thousand square foot lot that has like a fifty foot frontage, is that reasonable? Because of, you know if it's got a nice angular kind of thing. Angular kind of thing, but if it's a size more spiked so anyway I think that's gotta play into it to make up for that type of topography just you can't can't just grid stuff out yeah, on topography. Well, other things on these things are they're all nice and pretty because they're on a flat piece of paper and mm -hmm. it just yes. sketched out. That's that's it, it's. I think that's a to me a lot of those things are more planning documents and it's you know you hope for the best but it yeah. doesn't always work out that right. way. Right, and you're probably going to see some things. Yeah, and I just you know and again I don't know if, I don't know if the cul de sacs are those are a hundred foot cul de sacs or not. Yep. Yeah. yeah. Mm -hmm. That's good. Another thing with the, if you were going to do the cul de sac code, it's should be expanded to deal with radius of curved curved streets because it's cul-de-sac would be the circle that would be the ultimate mm -hmm. puzzle but if the street is all windy would you want to deal with well how should you still require 60 feet on this windy road right curved, yeah. curved radius. because your your neighbor across the street might have a a long Longer curve, long would be on the long side of the curve, and you might be on the short side of the curve. <laughs> 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 it's a lot to think about when it's not a straightforward grid. Yeah. Okay. Is there a, a particular time frame that we want to be able to nail this down for the cul de sacs and the fly fence? Um, I, I do mean, think, I do think, creating, sooner than later, can say yeah, yeah, creating clarity, so, creating clarity uh, yeah. sooner than later. Um, I do, you know, speaking of like those pieces I was telling uh, Commissioner Charbonneau right there, like looking at those two large lots that are over by there, I would imagine that that, that I would not be surprised if that ends up getting turned into like large sections of residential property at some point in time, possibly. Yeah. Um, and so I think, and, and then if they're trying to make the best use of land, I think it's the best way that would be helpful is create very clear guidelines uh, on those things. So. And update this note B. So that we know what to do with multifamily. Yes, we need to do something about that as right. well. Right. Just right. Right. right now. <laughs> so, do you guys 
you want from us right now, or, or where, are we, where are we standing on do all this? Want, do you want a recommended language to come in another work session to look over? And, or do you want to for the uh, cul-de-sac and the flags? Mm -hmm. Yeah, I think it probably another work session. I think I don't know if we, yeah. you know, have it ready for prime time right after this meeting. Definitely not. <laughs> no. And then for lot measuring lot widths for flat lots and cold sacks. Because right now our code does say that we measure lot width by kind of our code does say. It, it says when you measure from the right angle from the right angle of um, the front is a lot width. But mm -hmm. the, that's difficult for a cul-de-sac. There's no right angle. And for the flag lot, the true lot with the flag lot is right. not that, that right angle at the front of the lot. So that's something to think about, too. How do you want to measure lot width for those flag lots and cul-de-sacs? Is there, especially with flag lots, um, is there a like a subset where you have you would have your your lot sizes, whatever, where it's wider um, or overall um, square footage, and then your frontage size is required to be X amount. So say, I'm not clear, but like your frontage is 30 feet, and then the rest is measured independently, like two different measurements. Is that fine? I see. Feel like you really couldn't. Get a proper representation of a flag lot with one measurement, whereas other lots you can get pretty good, like it's mm -hmm. 30 feet by 100. Mm -hmm. Right. That's in one of the examples, or what you're saying is it's, it's, it's in the uh, Draper. Draper, Utah. Yeah. 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 Is that what you're talking about? Yeah. yeah. I think something like that might be a good, good idea because I don't, I don't know if I really want to just measure it off of one thing on a lot that's such a mm -hmm. odd shape. Okay. So maybe something like that, if that's possible. Is anyone really good at jigsaw puzzles? No. <laughs> I can play Tetris. Um, <laughs> this is what it is, you know? Yes. Yeah. Jigsaw puzzles. And also like the call sec. Has there been a, a, a study or um, the a... The world work right around the edge. I think that's the fairest way to do it. Mm -hmm. You know? That way you don't mind. That way you're not relying on pulling back tape off of, is that 20, is it here, is it there? It's pretty easy to sort like run it, one of those rolly, uh, I don't know what to call it, um, survey. Measuring line? Yeah, real line, right mm -hmm. across and be like, boom, it's this big. Mm -hmm. okay. yeah. What's the, my question is, because there's these examples for setbacks, right? And, you know, they determine, uh, they use this, uh, the, the setback for the front end, you know, like 20 feet or whatever it is for the cul-de-sacs to be for their frontage. I mean, if, if this is established somewhere else, I mean, I'd love to have a 60 foot frontage or whatever it is, you know, that we need to have, but if other places are doing that and it works, is that, you know, is there a particular reason that they've done that before um, in other places for cul-de-sacs? Because you know, when you have a curvature, you know, around that, and they're all 60 feet, you have a lot less, you know, obviously us usable land for people to build on. You know, is this just efficiency for builders, or is is there a real reason as to why they're doing that? You know what I'm saying? That uh, you know, why they chose that? Why have a clear blue? Why would you use a setback for a frontage? You know, 20 feet back. You know, is that just for the convenience of a builder, or is that just a is there a you know a, a geometric reason because it's in you know you're plopping a bunch of houses around a circle? Yeah, I just thought you know because I'm sort of wondering you know is you know again convenience or is there a, a real really a good reason for it? Because I'm I'm fine. I agree with you know uh, Nathaniel about that. I'd like to have the biggest frontage because you you know, for the homeowner and everything else like this and ease of vehicles going through and snow removal and all the rest of that stuff. But still, you know, but you don't want to penalize a builder either if these 20 foot deals or whatever it winds up being for the adjustment for the frontage has, has a good reason and logic that has been used in, in other places. And I, I just see the examples. I just don't know the, the rationale as to why. And on page 11 it says that 
for, with setbacks that they're required to do certain things. So they're important. Yeah. Setback yard, you know, for yards yeah. and varieties. There's no accumulation sunlight, yeah. there's privacy, you know. Mm -hmm. Because if, after a while, pretty soon, if you, you, you make it so rigid in cul de sacs or flag lots or, or the rest, with, you know, some rigid um, measurements, then, you know, it, it sort of de incentivizes people to build certain ways. And cul de sacs are wonderful. I mean, mm -hmm. they're, they're usually family oriented, kids are yeah. playing, you know, the whole thing, everything else like this. They're, they're a great benefit, but if you make it so um, difficult for them and ultimately very expensive because they have to meet these arbitrary measurement lines, you know, is that, and I'm trying to find a win win, mm -hmm. you know, yeah. balance on that somehow. Mm -hmm. But, um, if you could give me some, some background on that at all, that might help too. Because again, I like 60 feet. It opens it up for everybody on the lot, but I also don't want to be, you know, overly restrictive and penalize the a developer on that too. Yeah. Okay. Okay. What else we got? Are we, are we done? I think that those are all the items we have. Yeah, so we, I think we have enough information to kind of bring you guys back something that's a, a little more clear and specific, at least with maybe some numbers on no, this some, and, and some rationales that you guys can work off of and then go from there. Yeah. There's so many codes to consider. We don't really have good access to the fire codes. It kind of goes in if you've ever tried to understand those. They're really hard to read. They're very big. Building codes and yeah, fire codes and that. Yeah. But a lot of this is based on accommodating those requirements. Mm -hmm. So you need to know what they need. Yeah. But if you've ever been to the scene of a fire or an accident, they oh, need yeah. a lot of space. Yeah. It's like a, we want to know what our minimum yeah. code is before yeah. we decide what we're going to put so there. So they can effectively and safely yeah. operate. Yeah. That's why that, that's turning around a cold de sac to me is a big important thing. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Okay, I think we're, we're done. Great, 7.42. Okay. This is productive. I like this. I like sitting around the table. Yeah. Much better.